Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a psycho thriller film, Jason X. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins inside the Crystal Lake Research Facility, wherein a notorious murderer named Jason is being held captive and is awaiting cryogenic suspension, a method to free someone. He is said to have killed 200 people and suddenly disappeared without a trace. After some time of being chained, a staff member comes in to check on Jason and covers his head with a blanket. Two men arrive at the facility, where the researcher informs Dr. Rowan that he is taking Jason. However, Dr. Rowan objects as the cryostasis chamber is not yet prepared. Despite this, the researcher insists on taking Jason alive to the facility, as he sees him as valuable for research. He assures Dr. Rowan that the security head and his team are capable of handling Jason's transfer. The group goes to check on Jason in his holding area, but when one of the security head's men removes the blanket from his face, they discover it is a staff member, not Jason. Jason suddenly appears behind the soldiers, killing them. The researcher attempts to flee, but Jason throws a sharp object and kills him. Later on, Dr. Rowan is interrupted by the sudden appearance of the security head, who gets thrown in front of her. He urges her to flee, but Jason blocks her only escape route. With no other option, she heads to the cryostasis chamber. Dr. Rowan heads to the cryostasis chamber as Jason pursues her. She waits for him to approach, while positioned in front of the chamber. She takes the opportunity and shoots at Jason repeatedly, forcing him inside the cryostasis chamber. However, Jason breaks through the metal door and stabs Dr. Rowan before the emergency lockdown system activates due to the cryogenic breach, trapping both Jason and Dr. Rowan inside the chamber. 400 years later, Professor and his team search the old cryostasis chamber and discover a unit manufactured in 2010. Upon opening the chamber, they find the frozen body of a man wearing a hockey mask. They also come across the body of a woman, which a crewman alerts the team to. A modified android named Kay examines the woman's body and determines that she can still be revived. The team decides to bring her back to their ship for treatment. The team safely returns to their ship and the pilot informs a surgeon that they have discovered two viable bodies in deep cryostasis that can be revived. Surgeon contacts the ship's engineer to prepare for the team's arrival. Upon docking, Professor, Surgeon, and their team immediately begin the process of resuscitating the bodies. Kay reveals that the woman's body has been in cryostasis for 455 years. Later on, Professor tasks an assistant with conducting a full structural scan, logging the bodies, and placing them in stasis. In the lab, Professor directs Kay to begin stabilizing any structural fractures in the bodies. Meanwhile, a researcher is about to observe the other body that was found inside the chamber, with two assistants. However, those two are just causing distraction, making the researcher frustrated and telling them to leave the lab. After they leave, the researcher continues her work to revive the body. She performs the operation and observation on the second body, while Professor and his team successfully revive Dr. Rowan's body using microtechnology. Upon awakening, Dr. Rowan is greeted by Professor and his team, who explain her situation to her. After the successful operation, Professor contacts a higher-up in their organization to inform him about the discovery of the two 455-year-old bodies, one of which was successfully resuscitated. However, his higher-up seems unimpressed and dismisses Professor's explanation. He reveals that the name of one of the bodies is Jason, a notorious murderer from the past, and suggests that he could be valuable if sold to the right buyer. On the other hand, the researcher keeps on processing the other body to successfully have it scanned. While doing so, she notices something suddenly moving. She does not pay much attention and goes back to work. The researcher turns her back to the body, only to notice that the body is already missing. Suddenly, the missing body grabbed her sexy face and put it in the liquid nitrogen before smashing it completely. The body that she processed is identified to be Jason, the notorious murderer that Dr. Rowan tried to put in stasis. Meanwhile, Professor and Dr. Rowan discuss their past work at the Crystal Lake Research Facility where they had attempted to kill their subject, Jason, before finally putting him in cryogenic stasis. Professor introduces Dr. Rowan to his crew, but she becomes alarmed upon learning that Jason has been brought on board. Professor claims that he is already dead and valuable as an artifact, but she insists that they should get rid of him due to his history. Later on, Professor cannot show Dr. Rowan Jason's dead body, as he also learns that the researcher was killed by Jason without hormone mercy. 
Sergeant declares that they have a hostile on board and orders his team to prepare. An assistant tries to leave, but is attacked and killed by Jason, while the other one manages to escape. Meanwhile, two other members of Surgeon's team are having training in the alien simulator room. Suddenly, Jason appears inside the simulator. At first, the two members think that it is part of the game, until Jason cuts the other member's body in half, and the other member's head out of his body. This forces the two to stop the simulator. Jason grabs a member's neck, forcing the other member to draw his gun. The two try to fight Jason, but Jason manages to kill both of them in a blink of an eye. After this, Sergeant and his team head out to eliminate Jason. After finding out that his two other members are dead, the team members find out that there is a leading blood trail toward the cargo bay. After hearing the report, Sergeant decides to go together with his team. Later on, Jason heads to the engineer's room. The engineer thinks that the movement behind him is caused by someone he knows, so he does not pay much attention to it. Suddenly, the engineer notices a man in a mask as he looks in the mirror. Jason is about to kill him, but Sergeant and his team appear on time, shooting him ruthlessly. After a while, the team searches for Jason in the cargo bay, after failing to take him down with bullets. As they roam across the cargo bay, the team slowly dies as Jason purges them one by one. One of them manages to capture Jason, and Sergeant warns him not to let him out of the sight. However, the one who caught Jason ignores the warning and ends up being slaughtered by Jason, along with his other team members. On the other hand, Dr. Rowan knows that the team will not be able to survive Jason's murderous madness. After hearing the team slowly dying, she says that Sergeant is the only one remaining, with hopelessness on her face. As Sergeant walks towards the cargo bay, Jason suddenly grabs him and pierces his body twice before leaving him in a critical state. On the other hand, the people in the monitoring room are in a panic, as they realize that the Surgeon's team died one by one. Professor communicates with the ship's pilot calmly. Their ship is about to arrive in the Solaris space station, when suddenly, Jason appears in the control room. Jason kills the pilot and puts their ship in full throttle. Meanwhile, the Solaris space station warns the coming ship to abort docking, as they are too fast to land. With the full throttle on, their ship eventually crashes into the Solaris, causing irreparable damage. The crash is so devastating that it causes the Solaris to completely blow up, making it more helpless for the people inside, as they lose their only hope of survival. Later on, as everyone argues with one another, a loud banging on the door silences them. Suddenly, the banging stops, and Jason appears in the monitoring room's window, causing a panic. As the people flee, the remaining assistant notices that Professor is missing. Meanwhile, Professor tries to bribe Jason with wealth and fame, but Jason kills him anyway. Aware of Professor's death, the engineer of the ship comes up with the idea of doing the pre-launch from the bridge. With his idea present, the remaining ones believe that they can still survive, so they start taking action to escape and survive. On the other hand, Kay and Crewman discuss the percentage of their survival. Kay explains that the preparation for launch may be a simple procedure, but arriving there alive will be a conflict. Her statement makes Crewman frustrated because of the situation they are in. All of a sudden, the two smooches think that doing it will increase their chance of survival. At the same time, Dr. Rowan and the others are searching for possible ways to do the launching from the bridge. A man named Waylander and the ship's engineer head to the control room only to see the remains of the pilot. On the other side, Dr. Rowan sees that Sergeant is in a critical state and tries to help him. Despite the situation they are in, Waylander and the others still proceed with the preparation of their plan. With everything under control, the engineer orders Waylander to notify everyone that they are almost finished. Just as the engineer thinks that he's about to go home, Jason appears behind him, with Professor's head stuck on his knife. The others cannot do anything, but just hear the engineer's scream as Jason kills him. After the engineer's immediate death, Waylander and the others rush to where the escape pod is, but the assistant won't open the door, thinking that if she opens it, she might lose her chance of surviving. She tries to escape on her own, but unfortunately, the escape pod explodes, as the fuel lines are still attached. After that, Jason successfully breaks in on the bridge, putting everyone's back on the wall. Luckily, Kay and Crewman arrive on time. They proudly face Jason, as if they can beat him. Jason throws his weapon at Kay, putting her in shock and immobilizing her for a while. As Jason is about to pull out his weapon, Kay grabs him and shoots Jason ferociously. It turns out that Kay is not hurt, as she is just an android. After successfully tricking Jason and catching him off guard, Kay fights him fiercely, giving him a rain of bullets and a storm of kicks. 
She then decides to put an end to their fight, but Jason is too strong and manages to turn the tables. Fortunately, Sergeant helps Kay, so she immediately takes the opportunity to defeat Jason. Kay holds her dual gun again and ruthlessly shoots Jason. Using her gun, she manages to break the wall that leads to the laboratory, where Dr. Rowan was resuscitated. She then decides to end the fight by blowing Jason's limbs and head to make sure that he will not get up again. As they all think Jason is already dead as shit, everyone calmly proceeds to aid Surgeon and process their transportation. After some time, another ship receives the distress signal from their beacon and asks them if they need assistance. Although they will have the rescue ship's assistance, Waylander knows that they're going to have a core implosion in less than 30 minutes, and that implosion will only cause the rescue ship to fall together with them. Knowing of the present dilemma, Dr. Rowan comes up with a solution for disconnecting the walkways, but Sergeant says that could blow it up. With that being said, everyone is hoping that the plan will work out. Unbeknownst to everyone, Jason is lying on the operating table, where Dr. Rowan was resuscitated. Suddenly, the monitors and operating pad scan Jason's body. Just like what happened to Dr. Rowan, after scanning the body, the micro-technology that helped her to recover is now helping Jason to repair his body cells and tissues. After some time, the team successfully assesses their plan, but unfortunately, Jason comes back as a modified version of himself. Kay tries to fight him using her dual gun, but it does not affect Jason, so she confronts him using her robot muscles. Jason manages to behead Kay with just a punch and pulverizes anyone who comes in his way. With everyone safe and out of the hallway, and as the only one remaining in the hallway, Waylander has no other choice but to sacrifice himself. He then pushes the trigger, causing the walkway to blow up. After the explosion, everyone thinks that they are safe as a person from the rescue ship arrives to help. Out of nowhere, someone punches a hole from outside the pod. It turns out to be Jason, still clinging to the ship after the explosion. Due to the vacuum created by the hole, the other surviving member has been sucked out of the ship and killed. Crewman, Dr. Rowan, and Sergeant manages to escape the disaster they were in. Unfortunately, the exterior motor has no power at all. That's why they are having a hard time opening the hatch and escaping. After knowing that, Sergeant voluntarily decides that he's going for a spacewalk to jump the lines outside the ship and reroute them. After some time, Jason manages to break all the doors leading to Dr. Rowan and Crewman. On the other hand, Crewman thinks that they need to buy more time, so they decide to use diversion to do so. As Dr. Rowan and Surgeon are managing the control panels, Crewman creates an illusion by initiating a scenery of Crystal Lake from 1980 with two women on the ground. Jason doesn't seem to fall for the trick, but he only kills the women present in the scenery. Fortunately, the hatch finally opens. But after escaping the illusion, Jason immediately heads towards the hatch. Dr. Rowan comes back to get Kay's head, but Jason is about to catch her in no time. The surgeon comes in time to stop Jason. After the disconnection, the ship explodes, leaving Sergeant and Jason in space. Dr. Rowan, Kay, and Crewman are left alive. The movie ends with Sergeant and Jason falling to Earth. They are witnessed as shooting stars by two people on Earth, who later heads to the lake where Jason and the surgeon descended, indicating that the horror is far from over. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.